tight changes are very impactful. Um, you will definitely see your fish get very active on the tides. Um, I still haven't really dialed uh, an opinion on whether I like a low tide or a high tide change in terms of, um, you know, does one bite better than the other? I think, I think they go seasonally. Uh, the way our tide schedule is based is coming into this spring and early summer, it's always going to be a low tide change in the morning, always. It's like we never have a high tide early in the morning. Um, so I fish a lot of Wahoo fishing on the low tide. I would personally say it's not my yep. preference uh, because you will get a little bit of like siltier, greener water coming off the beach that does pull out onto the ledges and that might suppress the fish. So they may turn on in the afternoon when the incoming tide actually pushes the direction in just a little bit more. Um, if I had my way, I would have low tides in the morning when it's wall or high tides in the morning when it's wall season. But sometimes we'll just go in the afternoon. We're like, oh, we got such a great afternoon high tide. We're going to go drag baits up on this ledge. So we'll spend some time trolling and like look for what we're seeing. And then we'll come back to those areas where we saw big balls of bait or marked a few fish that just weren't actively feeding yet. And we'll go back to those places on that like higher afternoon tide. Oh, there we go. Nice, that was not a hit at the same nice, time. nice airborne bite. Well, there we go. Swing in the chair. We're on. Nah, it's all stand up tackle. Just keep nice and tight all the time. So you can pick up, stand up, okay. light drag. If he gives you slack line, take it. Oh, that thing fucking that airborne. Hard. Airborne shot. Yeah, that, one, that one got rattled first. Oh, you, can straight this with you. you can pick it up. Okay. Yeah, everything's going to be real gentle, real finesse. Okay. Um, you'll follow your fish all the way around the boat. If he wants okay. to go one side, go one side. Sounds good. Which got this one? The one you like. Ooh. Airborne bike. Got them all. Perfect. Perfect. I do like the way she kind of points the rod at the fish when it runs. It'll help take some of that drag pressure off of the reel. Um, that's what drags are made for us, you know? Let them run. Let them go. That's why you got all that line. People get a little anxious when fish take off real fast. And, oh, maybe we should push up the drag. But unless you're seeing the bottom of the spool, you don't need to, to worry too much. Okay, so. I think, what, did it, did it jump towards the bolt? Yeah, it jumped straight at us. Yeah, they were totally separated. Well, oh, you let me clear it out, bud? You want me to clear it? Ah, uh, you should be all right. It's gonna, yeah, it's fine. I'm not too worried about it. Just go right over top of her and you're clear. Yep, you're good. And this is what I was talking about too, about that, that light tackle approach to catching a wahoo like this on live bait is, you know, we we're already a minute and a half into fighting one fish. You know, if you were trolling, his head would already be up skipping across the surface of the water and it'd be a done deal. Um, but we've already had what, four runs out of this fish. So it's just really exciting. What is it? <laughs> Nice view. Yeah, so awesome. Just follow them right down. There you go. Yeah. And I mean, how often do you see airborne explosion bites like that while you're trolling? You know, and you knew it was coming. Like everyone was like, oh, 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 there it is. Like you don't get that warning from a lure, but you definitely get that warning from a live bait. <laughs> get him, Marty. Nice work, guys. <laughs> Very professional. All right. <laughs>
Oh my gosh. Nice. Pretty good with set too. Oh, you actually got the front hook in them. That's good. Yeah. So that bite was for us coming straight on the ledge. We were coming from deep water up into the shallow, and it was right when I started to make the turn um, that fish came up and ate. And it obviously stalked that bait for a few moments before because one rod got nervous, everyone saw it, and then it ate the other bait. So. You know, we're gonna try and circle back through and go right back through the same area and uh, see if more of them show up on that same little nook because there was a small pile of bait there too. So we're just gonna keep mowing the lawn and you can do this all day long and just steadily pick away fish, pick away fish, pick away fish. We've seen, since we were catching bait, I've seen five boats troll right through the same area and not one of them stop on a hookup. And we threw out a bait and we're on within what eight to ten minutes of dragging that bait so that's another reason that baits can really supersede trolling um, is you can pick off fish that aren't competitive we might not have huge numbers of fish here right now and when we get big numbers of fish they get competitive with each other and you they bite lures really well and you get three or four or five on at a time but when you have this early season run and fish are just stacking up and you've only got a pack of them here maybe there's four or five and they're spread out on the ledge and they don't have to compete with each other for food they're a little more choosy I, i've definitely noticed that in the early season and we will get bigger fish on baits as well every single year the biggest fish we catch is always on a bait um, they'll usually hit that 70 pound range um, which isn't huge for wahoo standards but for hawaii that's pretty big um, most of the fish we catch on lures are going to be 20 and under